24 ounce Tuesday, everyone. Let's get this grain meal out of the way. So hello. Um, what are y'all drinking for 24 ounce Tuesday? I've got a, a Yingling. It's not my favorite, but I don't hate it. Try to keep this video quick. A little update on the um, peach cobbler beer we brewed uh, last, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. Um, it's it's looking good. I pulled the blow off tube out of it two days ago, and it looked like the Krausen had dropped. Um, put the airlock on there. It's still bubbling a little. Um, I'll take a sample. Maybe this weekend, see where my gravity is at. Um, might not take a sample at all because I'm gonna let it sit in the fermenter for a little while. Um, kind of clean up before I bottle. Um, but yeah, I got lucky. It, it didn't hit the blow off tube, I didn't get a big mess, but it got close. It was uh, when I pulled the blow off tube out, uh, well, I hook a blow off tube to an airlock. And then it goes through the grommet and the lid. But um, when I pulled the airlock that I had the blow off to hooked up to, it was just caked with gunk. So it was that close to um, making a big mess on me. But I learned my lesson with Nottingham from another beer. I got a stain in the garage ceiling because of it. It won't be this coming weekend, maybe the next, probably the one after that. Um, I'm finally gonna do the amber, the hoppy amber. And um, hopefully, hopefully it turns out to be suitable for the wedding. Huntress, it's um, it's coming along nice. I've drank a few of them already. And um, still got a little bit of that yeasty, I'm still carbonating or still conditioning flavor going on, which I don't mind, I wish I did. I went and get into my home brew so quick. Uh, went to a beer tasting for a friend's birthday last night and brought two bottles with me and it, uh, it went over pretty well. I, honestly, I didn't expect them to like it because if you've not had a whole lot of home brew, you can't you know, pick out those off flavors that will go away. Um, we, we, I'm glad we drank it first though. Because after that, there were multiple treehouse beers. Um, we had Curiosity 31, Alter Ego, Julius. Um, man, there, there's too many beers to remember. I could look at my untapped. But um, there was the Funky Buddha, Maple Bacon Porter. That was incredible. Um, finally got to try two beers from... One of our newer semi-local breweries, it's about 45 minutes from me, called uh, Monkey Town Brewing. And uh, both beers I had from him were really good. Uh, Vietnamese coffee, Speedway Stout, that was awesome. Everything we had was awesome. Um, there was even some kind of kiwi something. I can't remember what it was. But yeah, look me up, Hophead Jimmy on Untapped. And... Uh, you can see the list there. So, yeah. Started working on a recipe for a blonde. And looking for just a kind of a cheap to brew, tasty beer. Um, you know, just that one you always have around. Because, you know, brewing IPAs all the time. Much as I love them, it gets expensive. Hops ain't cheap, especially the really good ones. Um, and I gotta get this ABV down on some of these beers because I'm constantly coming in between seven and eight percent, and that's just you know, the 54, seven plus percent beers, and it's, it's a lot of alcohol. Um, don't need that all the time. So, I'm gonna get me a five and a half ish percent. Blonde, which is kind of big for a blonde, but um, big old blondes, but anyways.
Got a recipe I'm feeling pretty good about. It's you know, it's wheat. It's you know this comes from I think I, think I got it from the Beer Smith um, recipe database. We do a little, you know, that's what we do. We add our own little touch to whatever we find with home brewers. Let's see. All right, so I've actually yeah, I'm using my cell phone to record this because um, the webcam is acting all goofy because the light right above my head does not want to come on. It's a little cool out here in the brewery right now, so where's the lights don't want to act right. Um, but anyways, this is my new toy though. I bought it used, but finally got me a grain mill. Um, a buddy of mine that owns, um, I've talked about it in the video before, Lily Pad, Hop Yard Brewery, um, up a couple hours north of me. Yeah, he went pro, and this was his mill at home brewing. He, um, Posted it up on Homebrew Classifieds, and uh, luckily I saw it, the post, and jumped right on it. Took it new for fifty bucks, so which I, I was getting ready to buy one anyways. I mean, I don't mind having a used mill. It's it's not like you can really tear it up if you're not an idiot. Um, what else? Oh, one second. Grab the new toy I just finished up. Well, you can't see yet, but I'll just grab it. Stir plate. So I built it out of uh, an old PC power supply. So hard drive magnet. Um, put two spacers or a spacer on each screw to drop it, the fan a little. I didn't even glue this. I tested it and didn't need to, the magnet. Of course, that's just the magnet that goes on it, the stir bar. Um, and then I wanted just a little more height um, off of the fan. So I trimmed the center ring out because it was grabbing my magnet and uh, mounted the, the fan cover upside down and I tested it out yesterday just with some water that thing works like a champ <laughs> this actually came out of a printer PC controlled but toast maybe we should name this dude toast but yeah so uh, yeast stirs will be in the in the future now so I gotta Still gotta get a flask, but I might not use a flask. I'm gonna test a clear growler uh, and see if my magnet will stay put. You know, they get that little bit of a dome, but if you they got a little flat spot, um, it might stay there. I'll, I'll test it out and see. And um, you know, worst case, it fell off in the middle of the night. I come back the next morning, you know, swirl it around. The magnet will go back to the center. I'm stirring again. You know. Stern is not necessary, it just helps. So, you know, we'll be doing yeast starters soon. Um, probably build me a yeast bank up as well, because I really like that um, Giga Yeast from Monel Yeast. I think it's supposed to be Conan. Supposedly taken from a can of Hetty and then built up to a commercial batch. And they sell it to us. But, um, I've done a beer with that, and I really liked that yeast. It was, it was pretty good. Um, you know, they say it's not worth it, but I used a lot of US 05, and I thought, man, why not build up some 05 and stockpile it, and uh, you know, turn one pack into ten. It's you know four to five bucks. I don't have to spend for a beer. Just you know, buy it once, build that dude up with some DME, cheap. I don't go super cheap on my homebrew, but I'm gonna, you know, cut costs where I can. Why not? But that's about empty. So 
I'm gonna cut this segment and uh, grab another beer. A couple minutes there, then we'll be see y'all later. All right, Huntress got a label on it. I gave up on taking labels off. I've got clean bottles that I give out to other people, but for myself, yeah, it's not worth taking labels off. But this is Huntress. It's uh, 13 days in the bottle now. Um, since the lighting sucks and I don't really be able to see the beer that well, but I'm going to do a tasting video when I say, okay, this dude's conditioned and it's this is what the beer finally is. Um, I'll do a tasting video then. It'll be the first of my homebrew tasting videos. Let's see. Nice hiss. Thank you, Justin. This beer's super cold. So it's, it's actually. This beer typically has a ton of head on it. It's so freaking cold right now. I've had it out here in my garage fridge and yeah, it's not very active right now. But. Right now the first thing that hits me, a little bit of that, you know, unconditioned off flavoring. Um, the first thing I think of when I taste it is cantaloupes. And it reminds me of a cantaloupe. So it's, it's tasty. And it, it smells like orange juice. It looks super dark with no light. It's actually got a nice gold flavor or color to it. That one, you just don't, don't see it out here in this bad lighting. So, yeah, that's, that's Huntress. Uh, more I taste, I almost wish I would have grabbed a different bottle because on bottling day, when you, know, you get to the bottom of the bucket and that last one burps. You say, oh, it's oxygen. Um, I'll go ahead and tilt the bucket, even though I know it's going to be oxygenated and or oxidized. And I'll go ahead and fill a few more bottles up, and I'll put them in their own separate six-pack carrier. And I wasn't thinking before I grabbed the beer before I, you know, started taking the video, and I did grab it out of there. So that that could be part of the reasoning. So this will be a good um, comparison point when I actually do the tasting video. You know, get that closer. It's the beer is not that dark. This I think this is an oxidized bottle. There's just enough hop or hops to um, you know hide it in the flavor. Of course, it's. Freshly oxidized, if that's a thing, so probably really hasn't taken you know hold yet and caused many problems. But um, I knew this this one six pack, or I don't know if it's four four pack um, of the ones after I you know got the um, the bubbles out of the bottling bucket, saying I'm done. It um. I went through two of those. This is the third. So there's one more. And the rest of them should be good, clean, you know, bottles with no oxid oxidization. I cannot say that. Oxidization, oxid, whatever, to it. So, but I'm kind of glad I accidentally grabbed this one though, because let's see, let's show you what oxid, you know, too much oxygen looks like post-fermentation, it, it changes things. Things change, Mox. 
but yeah. Um, even though that's bottle, that particular bottle's off, it's still tasty. Um, I can't wait to do the tasting video for you guys. Um, probably do it in the house so that I can have better lighting and you can really see that beer and um, see how much it's the head retention on this, the ones I've had so far. It's nice. Like I said, this thing's literally ice cold. So it's not doing anything as far as head goes, but yeah, it's the beer is what I wanted it to be. So for homebrew, that's all you can ask for. It's, it's not overpowering hops. Um, a little on the a little on the lower end of the bitterness at 54, especially for a 7.4% beer. I got it, the attenuation was really good on this one, but it's, come on train, that train's not as close as it sounds, it's just, every now and then you'll get one that's just cranking volume when it blows that horn, so we'll wait. Maybe a simple on the word, but um, oh yeah, the flavor for the beer. Um, damn it! Here goes the train again. Okay. Keeps blowing the horn. Anyways, um. Really nice body on this beer, which is something I was going for. Um, so far, the only tweaks I'm gonna make on the second batch of this beer, um, I'm gonna do another ounce of Amarillo in the dry hop. And I'm gonna cut my Crystal 10, which is a pound, I'm gonna cut that in half. And uh, I'm gonna pull some two row out of it and I'm going to add some uh, little Munich and a little more flaked oat just to you know give it a little more you know soften it up a little on the mouthfeel and um, a little more complexity on the on the ball so, which I mean I might not do that because I really like it but Happy 24 ounce Tuesday, and uh, see you guys here in a few days.